Hello everyone, welcome back to Magnifico Recaps. Today we will narrate a sci-fi thriller movie called Children of Men. Spoilers ahead, so proceed with care. Let's begin. On November 16th, 2027, a brief newscast reports on the state of the world. Women have become infertile and no children have been born for 18 years. Most of the world's societies have collapsed and in Britain, all foreigners have been declared illegal immigrants and are rounded up by the British military forces to be deported. Additionally, the youngest person in the world, the Argentine baby Diego, has been murdered by one of his fans when he refused to give them an autograph. The news gas is watched by a saddened and stunned crowd in a Fleet Street coffee shop. A man, Theo Farron, enters the coffee shop, seemingly indifferent to the news story or the crowd. Just after he leaves and stops to add liquor to his coffee, the shop is blown up by a bomb. The act is attributed to an underground guerrilla group, the Fishes. Theo is shaken by the incident and leaves work early, under the excuse of being shaken by baby Diego's death to visit his friend Jasper, who lives outside London. Jasper, a former political activist, now lives in seclusion in a well-hidden forest home with his catatonic wife Janice, growing variants of cannabis. The next day, Theo is captured by the fishes and is reunited with his former wife Julian, who leads the group. She and Theo have not seen each other for nearly 20 years after their son Dylan died in a flu epidemic. She first tells him that the fishes were not responsible for the bombing of the cafe the previous day. One of her group angrily claims that the government bombed the cafe, trying to create discontent for the fishes. Julian asks for Theo's help in securing transit papers. Theo's cousin Nigel has influence within the government. Theo visits Nigel and is able to get the papers, but they specifically state that Theo himself must accompany the refugee they're meant for. Theo agrees, and he joins Julian, her associate Luke, the refugee Key, and her midwife Miriam as they drive to the southern coast of England. Along the way, they're attacked in a forested area by a large mob, and Julian is killed. As they flee the scene of the attack, they're pulled over by the police. When asked for their papers, Luke kills both policemen. A short funeral is held in the forest for Julian. Theo breaks off temporarily from the service and cries privately for Julian. Luke is able to find another car and drives them to a safe house and a farm where the fishes gather. At the farm, Key reveals to Theo that she is eight months pregnant. She also tells Theo that Julian had told Key that she could only trust Theo. The fishes hold a meeting to decide what to do with Key. They conclude, despite Theo's objections, that Key should stay with them until the child is born. Theo thinks the pregnancy should be made public. The fishes think that the British government would seize both Key and the baby for their own political ends. They leave the decision to Key, who agrees to stay in the custody of the fishes. Later that night, Theo awakens to a commotion outside. Two of the men who attacked the travelers that day have come to the safe house, one of them badly wounded. The other is one of Julian and Luke's operatives, the sociopathic Patrick. Theo eavesdrops in their conversation and discovers that the attack on the car and Julian's murder were both arranged by Luke and the fishes, who wished to use the baby for their own ends. Luke and the others plan to kill Theo the next day. He quietly awakes Key and Miriam and convinces them to leave with him. They steal a car and narrowly escape the farm after Theo is able to disable their other vehicles. Theo takes them to Jasper's house. While there, Jasper makes arrangements for Key to meet a ship called the Tomorrow a vessel belonging to a group called the Human Project, a collection of scientists based in the Azores off Portugal and dedicated to restoring human fertility. Jasper arranges for his friend Sid, an immigration officer, to help Key, Miriam, and Theo enter the immigrant camp at Bexhill. From there, they will make arrangements for Key to slip into the English Channel near Bexhill to meet the tomorrow. The fishes find Jasper's hidden home, setting off the alarms. Jasper lets Theo take his car and gives them an escape route. From a nearby bluff, Theo watches as Jasper refuses to give the fishes any information and is cruelly murdered by Luke. Before the fishes' arrival, Jasper had euthanized his wife and dog. Miriam tries to comfort Theo, who angrily rebuffs her and orders her into Jasper's car. Theo drives them to a nearby abandoned school to hide out and wait for Sid. While there, Miriam talks of her past work as a midwife and the onset of female infertility 18 years prior. Sid arrives acting very intimidating at first, but takes the fugitives in his truck to Bexhill once Theo says the passphrase, you're a fascist pig, arranged by Jasper. As they approach the detention center, Key goes into labor. 
When they arrive, Miriam, while trying to protect Key from the guards, fakes religious mania and is taken off the bus, hooded and detained. However, her fate is not revealed. Theo and Key manage to enter Bexel with her pregnancy undetected and meet a woman named Marishka who takes them to a dingy room. Right after they reach the room, Key gives birth to a girl. The next morning, they are met with Marishka and Sid, who tells them about an uprising that has taken over Bexel. The fishes have broken into the city and the National Guard has been called out to restore order. Both Sid and Marishka are astonished to see the baby. Sid, having seen Theo on television the night before, plans to turn him in for a large reward. Theo being a prime suspect from the attack on the road. With Marishka's help, they escape from Sid and find a temporary haven with Marishka's people. Marishka is also supposed to take them to a boat that'll get them to the tomorrow in Bexel's harbor. Theo, Marishka, and Key enter the city and are quickly found by Luke and his cohorts. They take Key and her baby and leave Theo and Marishka to be executed by Patrick. They're able to escape when a skirmish erupts nearby, splitting them up. Patrick and a few of Luke's men begin shooting at the National Guard and Luke takes off with Key. Theo goes looking for Key, finding her in a decrepit apartment building which is under fire from the military with many horribly injured people laying amid the dead. While searching for Key and Luke, Theo sees Patrick being hit and killed by gunfire. Theo finds Key with Luke who's shooting at the British forces outside. Luke remarks in a distraught tone about how the baby started crying, the sound hitting him very hard. As Theo attempts to take Key and the baby out, Luke opens fire in Theo's direction. Luke is killed a few moments later. As Theo and Key walk out of the building, everyone who sees the baby stands in awe and the fighting stops. Many of them break into prayer. The two walk outside the building and begin to walk away. The fighting resumes. They find their way back to Marishka and the rowboat she's holding for them and float out into the Bexels Harbor. Marishka refuses to leave with them and pushes the boat out. The two make it out to a nearby buoy, which marks the rendezvous point. As they wait, jets fly overhead and begin a bombardment of Bexel. Key sees blood in the bottom of the boat and panics, thinking it's hers. Theo tells her he was hit in the abdomen when Luke shot at him. Theo has just enough time to teach Key how to birth the baby and she tells him that she'll name her after Theo's son Dylan. In the final moments of the movie, Theo loses consciousness as the tomorrow arrives. Just before the closing credits roll, the sound of children laughing is heard.